I was um, listening to, um, I was actually looking at the BBC News recently and it, uh, it, it showed that Sting, as you know, big musician, had raised the issue that artificial intelligence was going to take over from him in writing songs and the music that goes with the songs. So I thought I'd just mention that in the context of the next presentation because Lex is going to talk about the language of song, AI-powered Riffit enhances communication and learning. So remember that Sting is very concerned about um, machines writing his songs for him. So Lex, over to you. Really glad to be able to uh, present the outline of Riffit. And of course, I uh, want to thank uh, Larry Gold and Larry Hunter for uh, the advice and support they've given. And the conference up to today and past conference also, I always such a great array of topics. It pleasantly tickles the brain um, and thereby uh, keeps the cortex active. I must say from uh, uh, pornographic brain imaging to free will and determination, um, they're all topics that uh, um, can lead to, uh, to local cortical trouble. Um, so the, uh, the outline of the language of song and our ability to create song in real time using new technologies for us opens up a world of opportunity. We speak our language the way we do today, spoken words. But historically, song has been used over thousands of years in religious settings, in teaching, in learning, and I think 15th, 16th century, the bard at the town square gave news. People presented the material as song, and it reaches us emotionally as well as practically by different means. And that is what Riffit is about. We want to bring the language of song today to the English-speaking world, to reach each other differently, to bring different memories, to bring different emotions. And most of all, one of the starting points is from an educational and learning perspective. We can now do that. We make song in real time from any text. We've done some limited voice to text to song. Small company have to focus like a laser beam. Today, it's text to song in real time. So harnessing the power of song using AI. So um, like I highlighted, music has the power to bring people together. It inspires, heals, evokes uh, emotions and enriches our lives. An important part out of fMRI imaging is that song and music can light up different parts of the brain from spoken words. And the right hemisphere is uniquely for, uh, applied initially for music and song, as you can see in that fMRI image here. And the historic use of this, I think, speaks to what we hope to accomplish. There's also a benefit to what Riffit is doing. There's a lot of third-party literature on the use of rhythm, music, song, for a range of indications. And we're building on that data. So while we're a very small company, and we've done one study thus far, there's quite a lot of data out there from third parties that is enabling uh, what we hope to accomplish. Now, um, Music and song help uh, language processing, language of song. There's a range of indications. Um, he highlighted dyslexia, uh, the ability to read and learn, enormously impacted by the use of rhythm and song. Um, autism spectrum disorder, joint attention behavior, reading and learning, lots of literature, helps students enormously. Importantly, aphasia, people that have had a stroke or have had brain damage. Expressive aphasia, people that can no longer speak but will be taught to speak through song. And that is their initial inroad and then later they tone it back. For folks that have receptive aphasia or in global aphasia, there are examples where cognition of the language that is being received as spoken words is impaired, but song can be better understood. So it is a way of dealing with the right and the left hemisphere and overcoming impairments. And to an extent, that is also the case in uh, folks with dyslexia, they have reduced synaptic density uh, in the left hemisphere. And that also speaks to the potential impairments at genetics. There's a lot of components in there. So we're going after all of these indications. Um, at the moment, we are focusing like a laser beam on what dyslexia can do for us. And we're going after the general population for communication and sharing, uh, birthdays, meetings, uh, uh, Greetings to family members in real time, creating the ability to just send each other a message 
and use song rather than spoken word. So uh, examples of uh, the literature, like I highlighted for aphasia, um, please don't stop the music, song completion in patients with aphasia. There's many, many folks that have had a stroke, that have had brain damage, that will learn to speak through song, or receptive aphasics that can use song to better understand uh, the, the words around them. Um, in autism spectrum disorder, innovative computer technology, applied broadly to help people with joint attention behavior, with learning to read, with learning to speak, and it is powerful, there's lots of literature, and we are simply an inroad to this, based on uh, the, the capabilities that we have developed. And then, of course, dyslexia, uh, beating dyslexia through music, uh, dyslexia essential, and we'll speak about it in a minute, the inability to put the sounds, the phonemes of letters together to understand what the written word is, and thereby be able to decode it and understand the sentence. And there are many people that suffer from that and have diverse uh, 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 aspects of dyslexia. It's, it's, it's a, broad, uh, a broad set of indications. So um, how, did, how did I get to Riffit? And uh, my colleague, uh, Sashi Sashidar, is here as well. He's been enormously in, impactful. Um, Larry has helped. Uh, Larry Hunter has helped. Um, I started Riffit four years ago because I had recognized that my youngest daughter, who had a learning impairment, Everything she got through song, she understood perfectly well. It was right there. What she got on the radio, she could understand. But I'm a Dutch boy, and in the Netherlands, you can use 20 word sentences with 15 subclauses in there. It was somewhat hard for her. But it was also difficult for her to understand other just regular spoken, uh, spoken English. And hence, I had done neuroscience broadly and in, in, in my career, and I was familiar with what it can do for people with selected indication. So I started looking for schools where retired opera singers would be teaching the history and the mass in elementary school and in middle school and in high school. And in the US, nor in, Europe, nor in Europe, such schools don't exist. So I decided to leave my job at the prior company. We had done well, we'd moved out, and started with it with the goal to build algorithms that in real time, can make song out of any text, or for a teacher, because spoken language can also be difficult to understand for dyslexic students, the teacher could use it, have a microphone, speak, and then the student would be able to get the lecture and the text through a singer of their liking and a genre of their liking, so that they can then better engage and learn by better means. That's the goal, and that's what we've done over the last four years. We've made good progress, small company, the laser beam is there. Um, learning disabilities impact millions of people globally. Um, 700 million people in the world have learning impairments. It's a large, large population. And the language of song will have an impact. It, it, we have an opportunity to make it a reality. I won't sing for you here because you would truly dislike it. But the app is hopefully somewhat better than what I could do for you. <clears throat> um, neurological disorders, autism, dyslexia, aphasia. Numerous social and educational challenges. Study in Texas. 50% of the present population has people that are dyslexic. People often, as reading is difficult for them, they leave high school, they drop out of school, they end up in a part of society where they're not enabled. They're being bullied by their, by their other classmates because they're considered not smart. It just got nothing to do with IQ or intelligence. It is an impairment that they can overcome. But people have been significantly impaired by this, and that is a true issue there. So we hope to overcome that, and we hope to work with that and uh, improve on those outcomes. So there, there, are, there are solutions for learning impairments, but the methods are old. Uh, Orton, Gillingham, and others are now 70, 80-year-old method, methods that are applied through which people can be taught to read and thereby participate in their classroom and learn. But it is not easy. And I think we have an opportunity to bring a new tool to, the, to, to this community and thereby move it forward. And that is just for those that have... Uh, uh, learning and uh, 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 selected impairments. On top of that, um, you'll see that there's quite a pickup in the use of the app as we have it now for the general population. People like it. You can make song. So this is a, a poster that I uh, saw three weeks ago in Boston uh, over a coffee store there. I love cappuccino. So I said, hey, come on, this is real. 85% of Boston parents think their kids read at grade level. In Boston, Newton, Cambridge, 30% of the kids actually do. And that poster is here to help people. Go for programs, learn to read better. Boston is 30%. There are cities where it is 5%. It is ignored, it is not being managed, and we have an opportunity to make this better. So I, I like this. Uh, um, uh, it's, uh, the cappuccino was good, and the poster is better. Uh -huh. So 
uh, what we did is we, we built, we built Riffit, uh, introducing Riffit. What is our mission? Bringing the language of song to the world. That's the goal of what Riffit wants, uh, wants to accomplish. And that, that users create fully custom songs from anywhere. You can access the internet, you can access Riffit. So that's part one. It is a new language that we can use by which we can re reach each other by different means. I'll tell you an anecdote. I, I like to write uh, novels and I've, I've, I've done some. There's one which is going to happen where you state, this thing is going to be big. Everybody in the world is going to use it. And your partner, hmm, she may not like your voice. Or she chose a different man's voice or a different female's voice. And you always use that device. You don't speak to each other anymore. And even the genres can change. And the whole world uses it because everybody can change things a little bit. I don't like Lex's voice. You could pick someone else. And then 40 years later, the electricity worldwide goes down the tube and everybody has to listen to each other's real voice. And then chaos comes down on us. So that's the idea. <coughs> um, providing song for learning, therapy, and communication. Apply technology to diverse student and patient populations and develop applied protocols. And then providing song for communication and entertainment, which is a third opportunity in there where people enjoy it. And people are currently using it. And you'll see that our user base has catapulted over the last, uh, over the last time frame. So our platform. We use generative AI uh, and uh, discriminative AI uh, uh, for the Riffit Text to Song platform. Communication, enjoyment, entertainment, enhanced learning and therapy. So um, we've done one study, and I'll show you uh, the, 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 the highlight of that, but there's many uh, material from third parties, to improve comprehension. And what was important in that study is that the students that were there, they were asked, what did it do for you? Did it change your concentration? Did you like the engagement? Because most of these dyslexic students, they don't like to read. It's very painful for them. And 60, 70% of them stated, more engaged, enhanced my concentration. We didn't measure it, it was their statement. We just got the data out of comprehension from that. And I think it's pleasant to see that students that generally don't like to read felt that this was something that could help them. Um, so how does it work? Uh, this is a very short outline of what uh, our Riffit platform does. We use uh, gen we, 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 the AI generate lyrics for us, GPT we use. You put in three or four keywords at the moment. You can make a song, you can make lyrics, you can make rhyme. Uh, that's a very simple way of generating a text that can be then converted to song. And there are a number of steps in there where initially the language is being analyzed, syllabic complexity is evaluated, that's put together in the actual uh, uh, the, 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 the musical metrics, the bar which it, within which it will go, based on which there is an initial, initial outline of the, the, uh, the, 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 the syntax of the sentence that is being changed. Then durations are being applied with regards to what it means for that, uh, that, 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 uh, that musical component based on the natural language processing, and we apply a rhythm based on those. Then pitches are being applied so that for a particular genre, be it pop, hip hop or others, those syllables are being put together in a manner that is logical and will make pleasant music. And then subsequently, um, we have, uh, um, uh, together with uh, collaborators, uh, made voice banks. We have used artists out of LA, artists out of New York that sing 40, 50 songs. And they are then, out of those songs, we extract the vocals and those vocals are put in the voice bank that are then put on the phonemes and thereby the words are reconstructed that have to appear a song. And again, generative AI there makes a smooth language and uh, creates uh, a song that is uh, comprehensible and pleasant. So then the final pitch curve is generated and then uh, with that uh, they're all put together and then the actual uh, 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 singer's uh, uh, the song is uh, generated. And this uh, uh, as this course on, on the web here, it would take 30 seconds. Uh, we've had a uh, version downloaded on, on the laptop that was uh, initially shared through the app stores. That is instant. Your song is there in less than a second, immediate, which is very pleasant because then you can use it in the classroom, for instance. Now, um, the apps that we have at the moment um, are uh, twofold. Um, we have one app that is applied for uh, students in, uh, in the classroom setting. Google Classroom is in here, where essentially you can, you can upload textbooks. And you can then, out of six genres, choose the genre that you like. We have three voices in there. You can pick the voice. You can change the speed. I'll show you examples of that in a minute. You can change a accompaniment in there, which for us to what the background instrumentation looks like. And then essentially, uh, you create a real-time uh, real song. If you uh, snap this code, then uh, you will have access to the app. It's free. You can find it and thereby make use of it. Um, then we have also used a second app, which is Songer. And Songer is more for entertainment. And the, the nice thing about Songer was when we started it, 
the, the learning community is relatively conservative. The schools are hard to gain access to. Um, the methods that are applied are 70, 80 years old. And we worked for three years really hard and we did studies and we found traction there. But Songer, which is kind of like, whoops, sorry about that. Um, I have to go back. Um, Songer um, is more for enjoyment. And Songer has advertised what the Rifford Reader app can do for the students. And thereby they have both gone up at a higher rate. And I'll show you what the numbers are at the moment. So here, very simple. Um, pop, hip hop, cafe, and piano rock are being applied. You put in a few keywords, generative AI, GPT, makes, uh, uh, makes lyrics. Uh, you say render and the song can be emailed, downloaded, shared, listened to, and thereby uh, 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 enjoyed uh, as it goes forward. So what are the opportunities beyond communication and education? We currently have a consumer app uh, uh, and a learning app. This is uh, the, the Songer and this is the Vivid Reader. Of course, entertainment, communication, education, therapy, reading, they're all in there. And we have a lot of work to do with regards to developing the other app components that I think we'll find an inroad where people will enjoy making use of those. But uh, um, um, again, focus is uh, part one of, uh, of progress here. So we have a lot of plans uh, and we've made progress, but we have a lot more to do. So what is the opportunity? Affordable on-demand song, lots of literature that supports it. Unique novel ways to create lyrical content as we have it. New ways to entertain, I'll give you an example of that. And copyright free custom song creation for the near term. So people if they have a song and they like it, they want to commercialize it, for now they can commercialize it. And by the time they're a bit more mature, we'll look at what that precisely looks like in the future. Um, we have, for instance, been contacted by people that are active in theater companies that make, uh, uh, make shows, take some five to six months to, to do, and knock on the door and say, hey, we like your app. Because sometimes people in the audience, they will give us feedback, they'll give sentences, they'll type the sentence in, and rather than anyone comment on it, they'll play it as song during their opera or other, and thereby interact with the audience in, in, in a direct uh, real-time manner. So dyslexia. Um, I spoke about it earlier. What is it? Why does it matter? There's no cure. Um, uh, uh, there's, of course, treatment modalities, and I'll give you a few examples. It is difficulty with learning to read and writing language, and it is profound, and it impacts many, many individuals. Hearing and manipulating the sounds in words, which means phonological awareness, as it is there. Long-term educational, social, and economic uh, consequences, self-esteem, behavioral problems are impacted, and early intervention allows people to reach their, fu their full potential. And there are many examples of individuals that have suffered from this that are uh, well known. Richard Branson is an example of a person who has spoken about this dyslexia, because there are unique capabilities and gifts. People overcome these, and it takes uh, significant uh, intelligence to be able to make that happen. So uh, we did a pilot study to evaluate the Rifford reader in a group of 50 students, 48 students with dyslexia. We did a double crossover study over a period of three months where the group would initially get either song and then thereafter do multiple choice uh, 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 as silent or they start silent and then they go song. Which means they, when they get song, they read the text song, the multiple choice questions are song. When they do silent, they do it silent. And the data there was, uh, was, uh, was, was, was quite useful. Um, this is an outline of the improvement, there was a, a significant improvement in the overall comprehension in the group. This is a select group of individuals where silent reading and song reading is highlighted. The bottom line is that uh, there was about a 60% improvement in the population. There were selected students that did not enjoy song and they did not do as well. But the overall population significantly benefited. And 11 students oops, um, scored... Uh, uh, um, 100% uh, on silent reading that were not in included in this analysis. What was important is that the lower grade readers that are poor reading performers benefited the most. And uh, they went up by something like 200% in this study. We have much more to do. There's other studies that need to follow, but this is our first, uh, our first outline. Uh, this is what I highlighted to you earlier. Improves concentration, 73% said yes. Good voice. About 70% said yes. The app is fun to use, 60%. Not everybody was uh, 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 engaged with the app as it was then at the time. But there was an overall positive response with an improvement in comprehension for the students in that class. We have many more studies to do. This was the first outline. Um, 
people were age matched to students, they were reading grade matched to the separate component, but there was only one voice, there was no accompaniment. They could change the speed, but most students didn't do it. So it wasn't customized to the extent we would like it, but the results were positive, which is very good. Um, so 60% of the students benefited, and 18% uh, saw 100% improvement uh, when they used the Rifid app, which is good for these students. They went from not being able to read to uh, uh, some of them 100% score. Um, so the current treatment options, I've men mentioned Orton Gillingham, Davis, Rhythm Training, text-to-speech is there as well. They are being applied, but compared to what Song can do, they they're, they're almost a parallel approach. We have an opportunity to come in into this world and immediately improve comprehension. And we can develop methods for learning to read. We can develop methods to, for learning to speak. We haven't done that. Currently, this comprehension that we apply our, our, our intent to. In autism spectrum disorder, um, I've highlighted um, uh, visual and auditory processing differences, learning, communication, social skills are impaired. There's lots of studies what the impact is of music, rhythm, and song for students with uh, uh, autism spectrum disorder. Um, musically based interventions are there, musical approaches are there, um, exhibit a preference to song over spoken words. Again, it is a population that can benefit from having real-time access to song, and that is what we can, uh, that is what we can, uh, can generate. So our RIFID approach uh, to autism spectrum disorder, um, but that's what we're currently planning. Learn to read, learn to speak, joint attention behavior. Be with an autism spectrum disorder student, being able to type in a sentence, present it as song, and thereby get, capture the uh, student's attention. And those are the studies that we are, that we are planning. Um, interestingly, the FDA in 2019 made a change for those uh, uh, technologies that can be applied that are low risk, and listening to song is considered low risk. Um, we can uh, go uh, uh, directly to a therapist and uh, present it as a therapeutic, even though it has not followed the classical FDA improvement path. That is enormously helpful because then we can see how the population picks it up and what the benefits are based on the studies that we have completed. So our product pipeline. Text to Song for Education, Direct to Consumer and Digital Therapeutics for Dyslexia ASD, General Learning, General Communication and Entertainment. We will create songbooks, rather currently than audiobooks, we can create real-time songbooks. You can do them in real time or we can uh, do them in combination with publisher. Real-time song for social communication and then of course voice to song with regards to uh, if you all had an earpiece and our voice to song was ready, you would be listening to me singing now to a voice of your liking and a melody of your choice. Um, this is our current uh, user growth. Um, we, you can see here that uh, um, uh, initially when uh, we uh, uh, used the Rifford Reader, mainly the, only the Rifford Reader, we had 50 to 100 users roughly over a long period of time in schools and it made progress and it was slow. But then um, when uh, we were able to uh, use the uh, generative AI enabled Songer, people picked it up and as of today, we're at about 30,000 users, which has happened over the last six weeks. People are enjoying it, they're picking it up, they're making use of it, and they've created a large number of songs. I think at the moment we're at 50,000. But this is, this is very fast growth, which helps us, because now it is, we have never done advertising. People are self-advertising it. They're enabling it and they're moving it forward. Um, there are uh, folks in Japan, Italy, France, and of course a lot in the US that have made videos, that share the videos. They're using it in, uh, in Japan at the moment for learning to speak English. You put in the words, you get the words as song, and it makes it more enjoyable, and uh, they are advertising it there on, uh, in, in selected videos. So it's pleasant for us to see that the pickup is there, so now we can, uh, we, we can move forward. Um, our product roadmap uh, is roughly highlighted here. Uh, our song engine, of course, has continued to advance. We would like for any one of you to speak 40 sentences. They're downloaded, we'll make a voice bank. You can then create song to your own voice. Share it with family, share it with friends. The Songer app is there, the Rifford Reader app I've explained. The reading app uh, is being uh, the, the, the designed and built. This is uh, uh, really uh, uh, getting, uh, get, getting songbooks. Uh, the Song API, we're speaking with selected hospital systems where people have an interest in taking the app and applying it for their internal studies. And I think that will help significantly because it, it applies, it generates data, and uh, that, that, will start, uh, that will start soon. And then language therapy apps, clinical studies we need to do for ASD, aphasia, and of course working towards FDA approval, uh, that is uh, uh, the next generation. 
So uh, what was, what was uh, fortunate is that uh, when I uh, um, decided to leave my job and start with it, uh, I filed a patent. I said, uh, uh, we're going to file a patent on the real-time conversion of any text or voice to song for the treatment of and for general communication. Because there were no opera singers in schools. The patent issued in two years and four months because no one had done it before. And it's useful, it helps us, it advances us, and there's a small patent portfolio developing now. We have more to do. But it's, it's kind of like, it, it's nice, and I think the current uh, 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 AI capabilities, generative AI, make song. And uh, uh, fortunately, we uh, had people that applied to us with the voice banks that agreed to the use, so we, we haven't uh, um, uh, stolen anyone's uh, voice for inappropriate use. Um, the team, uh, as you can see here, uh, a, a range of uh, members have really contributed with, uh, with great insights. And uh, we're a small team, but uh, we're moving forward. And uh, I think it's, uh, uh, for us, an, an, an enjoyable pass forward. There was many thanks to all the folks that have contributed. Now, here is the, 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 the reader app as it is there. And um, let me see how we can start this. Um, you allowed here you can see that uh, you can click on the you can upload a, a document uh, explore the topic uh, that can be in there you can enter text you can import documents you can put books in there with thousands, thousands of pages there's a google classroom component in there that the teachers can use here we're going to upload a, uh, a document and i hope that the, the song will work and you can get an example this is the gold lab symposium of course and then we upload the document you click on the document you can then choose your genre um, you either go for pop, hip hop, country, chant, piano, rock, or children's song. Um, let's uh, we'll go for pop here. You can pick your singer. Kevin, Katie, or Emily are the three singers. Or you can do the speed with which it actually plays. Um, you can change the pitch uh, of the singer uh, to your liking. And uh, what you can see below here is uh, you can uh, change the accompaniment. For some, an accompaniment can be a distraction and thereby will not facilitate comprehension as much. Then you render the song. And now, the song should play. If we had sound, it would be great. But we have no sound. Well, this is the first soundless song, then. <laughs> we tried it twice before, and it worked. That's unfortunate. Well, what we'll do in the last uh, slide, there is an image, and you can uh, pick the song app, and then you can create your own slides. Um, um, it's not going to work. Okay. Um, it's unfortunate that... Uh, Yeah, but it doesn't come through the speaker. It's only on the, on the laptop at the moment. Okay, we'll do it. Six, we are implementing Larry's vision. It's the gold lab symposium mission. So I'll, I'll well, um, it was supposed to be funny, but you didn't hear most of it. I, I, I need to find it back. Hold on for a second. Let me go. Let's play it again. There we go. I will play. It should. There we go. Now you're going to get the whole thing again. So I'm not going to touch the screen because if I do, it may ruin itself. So, um, but. Um, the, the user base is significantly expanding. We have a lot of work to do to improve on what we have today. Um, and I think personalization with regards to using people's uh, voices would be great. And then there's, of course, the, uh, the opportunity to do uh, um, a voice to song in real time, uh, which I think will be very enabling for teachers, for uh, uh, partners, people that have had brain damage and can better respond to, uh, uh, to song than to spoken words. Almost there. Okay. 
there's quite a lot of study that the complexity of the accompaniment can impair uh, uh, the comprehension. Uh. Welcome to the Gold Lab Symposium. Great speakers at the podium. Exciting meetings and science discussions. Looking at healthcare future with promising assumptions. Here we are, here we meet. It's Larry's plan and vision for the science freak. Lunch in a short while we'll touch your lips. One will wait until. So, that's a song. Uh, so. My daughter would love to hear your applause. <laughs> so, I have to tell you one anecdote because it's personal. She is now uh, entering the third year as a viola major at the New England Conservatory. And surprise, surprise, her performance today to finish her year with the viola happened to be at 12 o'clock mountain time. So we're speaking at the same time. So, <laughs> um, If you make a click on this, then uh, you gain access to the Songer app. It's easy. Just put it on your photo. You, you can download it and then I make next steps. And there we are. Thank you. Well, I thought that was pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. I'd like to ask Jack, actually, whether, whether Jack is able to compare information derived from reading text compared to information derived from a song. You may have already done that, and it would be interesting to see what the, whether there's a different. Ah, well, there's now, well, there's some evidence that it obviously means something. Jack, can I can I ask you to say that into the microphone just so that your people in our virtual audience can? <laughs> uh, songs are great. We um, I had a graduate student graduate a couple years ago uh, who com who did actually song production where, with people singing to themselves, and um, as part of that uh, experiment, she also did song listening. And um, song listening, you know, activates the same semantic networks, the same conceptual networks as uh, hearing stories. But it's a very effective stimulus. And so um, I'm, I, think it, I think this is a really ingenious uh, way to try to get around a problem. And I don't see any reason that it, there's, there's nothing that I know of in the brain data that would suggest that this wouldn't work great. Great. Question next, that's a question just next door. We'll, we'll gradually move if down. If you did so. the same thing again with the same settings, would you get a completely different song? Yeah, so the song recreated um, has uh, no uh, fixed repeat. So sometimes uh, when I make a song that I want to send to someone, I'll do the same genre with the same singer four or five times because at times the pitches at the end of the sentence are slightly different it's okay but it's personal preference so it is not the same and it's also done like that to make sure that if you listen to a thousand words or a thousand pages it could get a bit boring if it were the same rhythm over and over and over again so you can change genre and it's not the same so, so my other question is if if you uh, tried this with some uh, a, a population that was not learning impaired would it improve their learning? Um, I, we have no measurement of that. I, I do believe that it will change the perception, the emotion with which it is received, and the thought associations that could occur. That is my opinion. That is part of learning, I believe. And I think you know that uh, uh, if you uh, resolve a conflict by spoken words or by song, it sometimes is received rather differently. So, yes. <clears throat> So, Michelle, you had a question. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, you know, interestingly, my Noah, um, one of the challenges that he has is he's incredibly intelligent, but he has a hard time learning new things that he doesn't feel confident about. 
Um, but music is a gateway for him as well. Um, and so I use it all the time. I sing things to him all the time. I just make songs up and sing them to him. Um, and I wonder, how are, what is your strategy for scaling, like with partnerships with educational institutions? Um, do you, have you thought about that? Are you gonna start with school systems or um, potentially with you know, kind of special needs groups or what are your, what are your thoughts around that? Yeah, so um, we've been working on this for the last four years and we've made, gained, gained access to selected school systems. Um, but um, the current, the existing therapeutic methods that are there um, are quite embedded. And hence having a single study done is good, but we need more studies for folks that are somewhat skeptical and have been doing the same thing for 80 years to impact the change because this is work for them. Uh, it's much easier for, for us to go to the healthcare systems where we have great contacts, where people have an interest, and they will work with their uh, autism, with their brain damage, with their severely uh, affected individuals. So yes, we want all of it, uh, but the company is today three people, and hence we gotta be a bit careful with how we do it. I'll make a joke for you. People say, Lex, how busy is it? How hard do you work? I say, it's not that bad. I only work seven days a week from five to nine. And if you don't listen carefully, that ain't nine to five. So we gotta be careful with what we do. So Meredith, you have a question. Lex, I have a question. Yeah. Um, thank you, this is wonderful. I'm dyslexic, and this was really pertinent to me. I majored in English in college because I'm that stubborn um, to try to get over it. I wish I had this tool then. <laughs> um, I'm curious about how, I understand that song can aid with comprehension and make the words understandable. I'm curious about how it impacts the ability to read. Does it actually help people, um, do, they, do people learn to read through through song, or are they just comprehending words that are not not comprehending the written word, but the the auditory word? Yeah. So at the moment, what we've done is comprehension. That is one component. Other studies are needed to make the next steps, where I believe we will have a profound impact. But uh, more work is needed. Yeah. So if there are oh, there is a question, one more question before lunch, if there is any lunch, that is. I promise there's lunch. I've seen it. I so, imagine there will be. That was a joke. With, could you compress like a book into like an orchestra? Like, so you wouldn't have to read the whole book. You could just listen to the Bach piece. Um, or could you, if someone is, you know, math deficient like me, you know, like, could you, but I want to learn all the things I need for statistics and for math that could be compressed into uh, some music I like? Absolutely. So, like, wow. Yes. So that's a, that's, a, that's a good note. So get your favorite novel turned into songs and work with this guy to remember them. And I think it's an absolutely amazing story. So thank you very much indeed for your presentation. Thanks, thanks. Great. And we're... We're going to take a, a break for lunch and be back in an hour and a half. Thank you very much.